Hello, and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. Today we'll be exploring artificial intelligence advancements through video games. Artificial intelligence is a controversial topic depending on who you talk to. On one hand, AI has the ability to improve the quality of the products we create and the lives we live. But some are concerned about where advanced computer learning will lead. This might not be an issue, however, if the AI is contained in a virtual world. To improve the way that AI can be used in real-world scenarios, researchers turned to video games to quickly test and gather information. While real-world testing is an absolute necessity eventually, the information gathered from games and simulations are becoming increasingly useful starting tools. One example of this is with Rockstar's Grand Theft Auto V. In 2016, scientists from the Darmstadt University of Technology teamed up with Intel Labs to help advance the self-driving car industry. Self-driving cars need to be capable of identifying and labeling their surroundings, whether it's the road, the pavements, buildings, trees, pedestrians, and of course, other vehicles. Training the AI to do this would take thousands of hours of collecting and labeling the real-world imagery, as well as the costly process of recreating endless possible scenarios like car crashes. However, the researchers have created software that runs with GTA V, which classifies all of the objects in the scenes and feeds it directly to a machine learning algorithm. Grand Theft Auto was chosen because of its near photorealistic appearance. It was also picked because of the volume of variables within Los Santos, which includes over 250 vehicles, traffic systems, hundreds of pedestrians, and varying light levels from day to night, as well as weather conditions. Using data from 25,000 frames of the game, the study showed that this approach can increase an AI's performance with real-world images, and can also reduce the workload and cost of the conventional labeling method. The team noted that it took roughly 60 to 90 minutes to annotate a real-world image, while using data from Grand Theft Auto, it would only take 7 seconds per image on average. Similarly, Ubisoft have taken a keen interest in improving the workflow of not just self-driving cars, but also the workflow of their programmers using AI. With their own AI algorithm created by their Montreal Research and Development Division, LaForge, the company seeks to improve the reliability of the code in a game before it goes to market. Having utilized 10 years' worth of code created for their commercial releases, the algorithm can learn from past mistakes, as well as how those mistakes were corrected, and guess when a similar bug is likely to be made by a programmer. The reliability of AI has been proven again with the use of video games. An AI has managed to beat Qbert with results that no human has ever managed to achieve. A paper was published by the University of Freiburg in favor of evolution strategies over reinforced learning when it comes to an AI working out how to complete a video game. Simply put, with reinforced learning, an AI improves every time it makes a mistake, whereas with evolution strategies, the AI creates a wide array of random algorithms and pits them against each other. The algorithm that works is then tweaked and the process is repeated. The study used this technique with eight Atari games from Pong to Alien, all chosen because of their varying difficulty. Though many of the games resulted in similar or worse results to what a human would achieve when playing through them, the AI managed to exploit a glitch in the game Qbert. The essay reports, First, it completes the first level and then starts to jump from platform to platform in what seems to be a random manner. For a reason unknown to us, the game does not advance to the second stage, but the platforms start to blink and the agent quickly gains a huge amount of points, close to 1 million for our episode time limit. Warren Davis was contacted on Twitter regarding this discovery. He stated that he wasn't familiar with the version of Qbert that was being used and would be unlikely to find this happen in the arcade version. But machine learning with these methods is still limited. When an AI is working to learn how to improve their style of play, it frequently has to rely on feedback from the game itself on how well it is performing. Elements such as stage progression, health, lives, and score teach a machine when it performs a correct or incorrect action. So, how can this be adapted for scenarios where there is no positive reinforcement? Researchers at Stanford University in California adapted their system's learning to take guidance through a user's commands, all provided in plain English. By using the game Montezuma's Revenge, users can provide guidance such as climb up the ladder or collect the key. 
The machine will then translate these commands and perform the actions in the game so that it can play better, negating the time it would take for the AI to work out key tasks on its own. A member of the team, Russell Kaplan, provides an analogy for this methodology. Imagine teaching a kid to play tennis by handing them a racket and leaving them in front of a ball machine for 10 years. That's basically how we teach AI right now. It turns out, kids learn a lot faster with a coach. And now for this episode's random piece of trivia, suggested by our Triviadon Patreon supporter, Chad Barnin. Sly Cooper 2, released in 2004 for the PlayStation 2, included a hidden character that references Cartoon Network's Toonami block. If the player pauses the game and enters left, left, down, right, left, right, Tom from Toonami will appear in the player's gadgets. Voiced by Tom's original voice actor, Steve Bloom, known for his portrayal of Spike Spiegel of Cowboy Bebop and Vincent Valentine from Final Fantasy VII, Tom will act as a distraction for any guards by shouting, Hey, hey, hey! And also occasionally, Hey, hey, peanuts! This cheat still works with the Sly Cooper 2 re-release within the Sly Cooper Trilogy or Sly Cooper Collection. Steve Bloom also went on to voice Ryoichi Cooper in the fourth installment of the Sly Cooper series, Thieves in Time. Thanks for joining us today. We're also supported by these fine folks over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the show like them, check out the link in the description below. Hello, my friends. Stay a while and listen. Gixaberry, Chad Barnen, Hector Imarillo, Ya Boy Beowulf, Straight Up Yuri, Pandion, Super AJS, Yumi the Palico, Rowan Albus, Devin Sloan, Era 1355, Phantom Sonic, The Natch, The Three Master Gamers, Max of Future Age, Robert Cox, Petite Mew, Paul White the Second, three two two three two two three two, Nestor Delion the Third, Jordan Ferrari, Vitus Varnish, Boreas Bear, Maximilian Summers, and of course, Matthias. Don't forget, <coughs> don't forget to like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff.